great way to get a dinner that is, I mean, what, that cost me a few cents of leftovers or, you know, whatever you have in your fridge, whatever you have in your garden. It turns out absolutely delicious and it's healthy and it's gonna save you money. It's a win, win, win. Back when I was a young gardener, I was very frustrated about how I never seemed to be able to reduce my grocery bill at the grocery store, even though I was putting all this time into gardening. The reality was that my garden was a little bit small for the size of my family, and I wasn't able to bring in enough of one thing at a time in order to really start saving money from buying things at the grocery store. And so back then, I learned a lot of tricks for feeding my family off of a small garden. Nowadays, we have a large garden that feeds us very well, but here I am and I'm at the very end of the season. And there's a few things trickling in here and there, but not really enough of anything to make full side dishes of any one thing. And it reminds me of being back at that time. So I wanted to share the tricks that I learned back then with you guys who are new gardeners and trying to figure out how to cut those grocery bills. When you're having to work with what you have in the garden, one of the tricks that I used is to use the three different options. That's soups, stir fries, or salads. Almost anything in your garden can go into one of those and make a meal pretty much all by itself. So today, I'm gonna show you how I make what we call a stir fry, you might call it a curry, out of the little bits and tips and edges of the garden and turn it into something delicious that's actually gonna feed my family a meal along with a little bit of leftover meat that I already have sitting in the refrigerator. The first rule to doing that is to go shop the garden. Go find whatever it is you have and it might just be a handful of this and a handful of that. Now the real trick here is never assume that two things don't go together unless you have experience eating them together. So don't assume that green beans don't go with bell peppers or that broccoli and cabbage can't be in the same dish. Always assume that things go well together. It'll save you a lot of time and you'll be amazed at what great combinations you come up with. Okay, I've got some green beans here, just a few little stragglers and oh, here we go. We've got some wine cap mushrooms. I'm gonna throw a few of those in too. Broccoli plants are great for this because long after their main broccoli floret has been harvested, they give off all these little side shoots. Even if it's just a few little shoots with a little bit of flowers on there, it'll still be great. I pull off the flowers that are a little advanced and might be tough. Never forget that the tender parts of the broccoli are also edible. So you can take tender stalks, you can even take leaves if that's all you have left, and they're gonna be great in all sorts of different dishes. Here we are in the hoop house and we've got some peppers. That one has a little bit of sun scald on them, but they'll still be great. So I'm gonna pop those guys in here. Here we are at the celery row and we haven't harvested this yet. It's gonna come out really soon, but there's a lot of great celery here. So I'm just gonna remove a few stalks. Here we go, look at that. Oh, that'll be great. These two remaining cauliflowers did, never did real well in the garden, so they missed the first harvest and we've been waiting for them to get a little bit bigger, but I think now is their moment. So far, we have a great basket full, and this is gonna make for a wonderful start for a meal. But we want to think about the flavoring that we're gonna use. Now, again, 
go with the idea that everything goes together until you try it and decide you don't like it. So I definitely wanna get some onions, some garlic, maybe some shallots into here, and then maybe some fresh herbs. I think I might go with some dill this time because I've got fresh dill in the garden right now. The onions are already out of the garden. They're up in the barn curing, so we'll have to go get those. Here we are at our onion curing station, and these guys are not ready to come into the house yet and to sit in storage, but they are ready for fresh eating. And since the white onions last the least amount of time in storage, I'm gonna grab a nice big guy, one of those to go with our meal. I never like bringing things that are too dirty into the kitchen, so I often go ahead and just take a moment and peel it right out here in the garden or in the barn. see what we came up with. We've got our celery. Ooh, that smells really good. Let's see, I stopped and I grabbed a few shallots because those are already in the kitchen. We've got our cauliflower, our onion, nice big guy, a couple of bell peppers, several, our dill, and we've got a selection of green beans, little bits, bits of broccoli florets and Kingstrophoria or wine cap mushrooms. Now, I think this looks great. This is gonna make a full meal for me, along with a little bit of leftover salmon that we had for dinner last night. We had a little bit leftover. You can see one of the kids is already picking at it and it's chilled all the way down. You could definitely start with a raw meat or you could just have a vegetable based meal. If I were starting with something that was completely raw, like chicken breast or something like that, I'd go ahead and cook that up first in my pan and then pull that out so that the flavors can then infuse also into the vegetables. Okay, now just to prep all of these different things. Aromatics, I'm going to prep and keep in a separate bowl because I wanna get those in first but because they're gonna make me cry to chop that onion, I'm gonna go ahead and put it off to last for the chopping. Everything else except for the mushrooms is gonna go ahead and go into one bowl right here. I'm gonna put it all in at the same time. This is non-fussy cooking, so it's gonna be really easy. The mushrooms I'm just gonna chop last on the cutting board so I can put them in towards the end. I don't wanna overcook them. They're pretty delicate, these particular mushrooms, and so I like putting them in towards the end when they have a last few minutes. Now, I wanted to talk to you about the homegrown celery. There's a lot more leaf on here than you would get in a store-bought celery, and that's okay. You could just chop these right up and throw them right on in, but I'm gonna save the celery leaf aside so I can turn it into great celery salt, a flavored salt. So I'm just gonna pop these off real fast and set them aside for a minute. If the produce is coming right out of your garden, you get to choose whether you need to wash it or not. Anything that looks visibly dirty to me and has chunks of dirt on it, I go ahead and wash. But if it doesn't, I don't usually. We use all organic methods and, you know, I'm just not really worried about what's up there in the garden. The dogs don't have access to it. So I think we're good, but you could wash yours. I'm just pulling the stem ends off the green beans and then I'm gonna chop them. It's a pretty fast process for this amount. Mm -hmm. 
If you're in a hurry, you could definitely pull out your food processor and just run everything through the slicer blade or even through your S blade and just pulse it a couple of times. That would make this go so incredibly quickly. But this just isn't enough of an amount for me that I feel like that's necessary. So it's kind of nice and relaxing to chop by hand too sometimes. So I'm just gonna finish it up this way. And you can see I'm being very inexact in my chopping. It just doesn't matter. We're gonna cook it all down and it's gonna be great. And it's gonna have a lot of different textures and flavors at the end anyways. So it doesn't matter if some pieces are larger than the others. for the aromatics. Today I'm using shallots, but you could definitely use garlic. You could use whatever you have on hand or leave all of that out. My biggest hope for your takeaway here is that this is really flexible. Use what you have on hand, even if it's in very small little amounts, even if it doesn't sound like some gourmet meal that's all gonna go together, you might be absolutely surprised at how great this is gonna taste when it's all done. Ooh, that is a fresh onion. I'm already crying. <laughs> Now we have our aromatics ready to go. We're gonna deal with these mushrooms. They're just, again, a little more tender. So I'm just gonna slice them up and have them ready to go. You don't really wanna wash the mushrooms too much, but if you see any visible dirt on them, just go ahead and wipe that off. Okay, and last but not least, the dill. And we're ready to go. Like I said, if I was starting with a raw meat, I would go ahead and cook that in just a very little bit of oil first and just get it done, remove it from the pan. But now we're gonna start with our aromatics. Now you could use whatever cooking oil you prefer. I have a home rendered lard right here. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that. The pan's already nice and hot. It's a good cast iron pan. Now for the amount of veggies we're going to be doing, we're, we won't be stir frying per se, because we are going to overcrowd this pan. So there's gonna be a little bit of steaming action in here. So that's where it kind of gets to be a little bit of a curry. First step is to get these veggies in here, the onions and the shallots or the garlic. Really what we're doing in this process, because we're gonna have to cook the rest of the veggies really well. So the onions would cook if we put them in with the rest of them. But really what we're doing right now is we're flavoring the oil so that when it coats all the rest of the veggies, we've got a nice garlicky, oniony flavor in it right there, ready to go. We're just getting it in, gonna sweat it for just a minute, just enough for that oil to pick up some good flavor. Let's go ahead and add in these other veggies. Now we're gonna give them a good stir, toss them around a little bit just so that they can get well coated with that oil. And we wanna move them around so nothing burns at the bottom, especially those shallots or the garlic if you put that in there. Now that's gonna take a couple of minutes to cook. And while it's cooking, let's talk about some of the options that you have with this. Now we picked some fresh dill to put in here and to season it but you could choose to instead make a little bit of a sauce to pour over it, maybe a flavored sauce. Maybe you wanna add some dried seasoning. Maybe you wanna take this to a little bit of a Mexican direction and you wanna add some chili powder and some cumin and serve it over a rice. That would be absolutely delicious. Or maybe you wanna throw some Italian seasoning on this and throw it over some noodles. You have a lot of different options. You can go so far as to decide that you wanna turn this into a soup. And if you have some good bone broth in the refrigerator, just cook this down just like this and pour some bone broth over it to make it a nice hearty soup. 
as the vegetables start to cook, they are going to release their own liquid that's inside of them. And that's where you're gonna start getting a little bit of that steaming action, which is great. You could even put a lid on. But if you start to notice that anything's browning on the bottom, you might wanna add just a little bit of water to your pan. That'll really start the steaming off or even a little bit of that bone broth if you have it. You can use all sorts of great liquids. Some people would use a white wine, that would be delicious. You could even use a red wine if you're going with that flavor profile. You could use a little bit of water with a little bit of vinegar in it, like a, a red wine vinegar to give it some really good, strong flavor. Right now, I think this is steaming just fine in its own juice, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Green beans are starting to look translucent. The bell peppers are starting to look translucent. The cauliflower is just starting to cook really nicely. So it's time for me to go ahead and add my mushrooms. This smells so good right now. I can't wait till I get the salmon in here. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. I don't even have the dill in yet. Now, if I were feeding a hungry family with a lot of growing teenagers or even young children, I would definitely be serving this over some sort of a carb, like noodles, maybe some whole wheat noodles or some brown rice. But when it comes to me and what I like to eat or if it's just Josh and I, I'm gonna get that meat in there and I'm probably just gonna eat a bowl full of plain veggies like this with the meat. It's gonna be so delicious and it's gonna make you feel so good. This is truly clean eating right out of the garden. Now I don't wanna season this too much until I get the meat in there because since this is a leftover meat, it's already been seasoned. And so I wanna make sure that I account for that amount of seasoning when I go ahead and you know do the final seasoning. But I'm just gonna break this up in here. You could chop it on the board if you didn't wanna get your hands messy. Now I'm ready to toss in that dill just for the last few minutes of cooking here. And I know that this is gonna need at least a little bit more salt because of the pure amount of veggies I have here and what was on that salmon. So I'm just gonna salt a little bit over the top. But again, I'm not gonna eat this with a carb. I'm not gonna put it on top of a rice or noodles or anything like that for my lunch. So I wanna make sure it's not over salted. If you're putting it over something, you might wanna over salt it slightly to flavor whatever it is that you've got going on with the noodles or the rice. Let's test it for seasoning. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Oh my goodness, that is that is gourmet, you guys. That is as good as it gets. For something so simple, chop it all up, throw it in one pan, and I don't think you could get something that's that good out of a fancy restaurant. Oh, absolutely delicious. Seasoning is right on, just perfect. I'm not gonna mess with it anymore, and I think we are good to go. Okay, so you joined me for the tasting part, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right, what do you think? What does it look like? Does it look good? It looks really good. Yeah, kind of looks like something we eat pretty regularly around here, huh? Yeah. Okay, it's a little hot right now, but take a nibble if you can find a cool spot and tell me what you think, or tell the camera what you think right over there. You like that? Yeah, like <laughs> for real, or are you just being nice for everybody out there? I really like it. You really for like real. it? So you're gonna eat that for dinner? Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's absolutely delicious. So there, you guys, is a great way to get a dinner that is, I mean, what? That cost me a few cents of leftovers, or you know, whatever you have in your fridge, whatever you have in your garden. Shopping in your garden is kind of a skill because you have to just assume everything goes together and throw it into the pan. And that goes against a lot of what we've learned about cooking. But let me tell you, 99% of the time, it turns out absolutely delicious. 
and it's healthy and it's gonna save you money. It's a win, win, win. And hey, if you wanna learn how to make that celery salt I talked about for when we save those celery leaves, then click this button right here and it'll take you to that video.